Welcome everybody to Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight we're going to be talking about the Random Number Generator um, app in the uh, Chapter 10 of my book, Objective C for Absolute Beginners. This is a series of, of about 10 minute YouTube videos that I'm posting uh, from the book that are little snippets that kind of help you learn as you're going through the book and going through the examples of, um, of how to learn Objective C programming. Um, again, they're quick 10-minute uh, videos. I, in, my, in my actual course at excelme.com, I spend about an hour to two hours on each chapter. So we're just kind of going through a snippet here and using it as sort of a, uh, um addition, appendix, if you will, to the different uh, um, chapters in the book. So let's get started on the random number generator and got a good number of students uh, on tonight on the live session. I'll take the Q&A. Uh, from me at the end of the of the 10 minute uh, video here. So let's get started again tonight is a continuation on the random number app that we started on uh, last Wednesday. Get Xcode up and let's just look at the application here after it compiles and I'm using a little bit of Cocoa and Cocoa Touch here with Objective-C to kind of make it a little bit more interesting than just a regular old console application with a bunch of text. So what I have is I have three buttons and a label. And um, from this, I basically I have um, an event that gets fired when I press the seed random number generator button that updates the label. Basically what that's doing is seeding my random number so I get relatively a, a true random number. You can go into the science of random numbers later on. But when I press the generate random number uh, button, it fires off an event to a method that then gets a random number. And I can continue doing that. And if I start the app over, okay, see we get a little bit different um, randomization with our numbers. So let's see how we do that. Again, on the uh, previous Wednesday night's uh, YouTube video, I went over how to basically use Interface Builder and getting our controls on on our views, etc. Now we're going to hook those controls up to our methods and so the events get routed to the right method. So let's go ahead and take a look at our nib file and you can see I have my my two buttons and a label and what you want to do is first of all before you go and make all of your buttons and labels you want to start out in your interface file and um, um, initial, I should say initialize, declare your outlets and your actions. Now remember, IB outlet and IB actions really um, behind the scenes they evaluate to void. They don't mean anything, but they mean a lot to Interface Builder as it builds your objects. So we're going to declare a label and two methods that belong to our class, random number view controller. All right, IB outlet tells Interface this is an outlet. Um, that we are going to be uh, that um, we are going to be hooking up inside of our view, and action IB action tells it, hey, these are these this method will take events and be sent to the seed um, method and to the generate method, and it will pass the ID of the control that sent it. So you could tell which control if you wanted to in your code sent that and generated that event because sometimes you can have multiple buttons all pointing to the same method and you might want to know what button um, generated that um, that event. All right, so here I've gone ahead and I've um, uh, declared my one outlet and my two um, and my two events and I'll talk a little bit later on maybe in our next presentation about what um, getters and setters do with our property and synthesize, which we'll use. So now once we have that and you save the file, very important, you save the file, now we can hop over to Interface Builder and it knows about those, um, those interface, those, your variables and your, um, your outlets and your actions. So here we have our random number generator uh, outlet and we have our two methods. And because I've already hooked these up beforehand, they're, they're already um, connected, but I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect them right now just so I can uh, connect them for you here. 
So basically, I want to connect this outlet, this variable, with this label here. And if you drag and you drop over and it doesn't connect, you probably don't have the um, type of control mapped to what you declared in your interface section. So I have a label, UI label declared, and I'm connecting to, to a label. It's happy. I'm go now going to go to my action section and I'm going to connect my generate random number button and I want to connect on touch up inside. Okay, that's the same as tapping. So when I tap on that button, that event gets fired and it gets fired to my, um, my, my two methods here. And I'm going to do the same for my seed, touch up inside. All right. And so as I move over these, um, these connections for my outlet, my action, I can see over here that they are over on my view where they're actually mapped to, which is useful sometimes. All right. And another way to do it too is you can kind of right click and expand your view. I have mine in the, my document view here, which is if it doesn't come up, you can just go to uh, Windows document and it will come up. And um, you can see, if you click on the detail view, you can see them and how they're mapped, okay, and what they're mapped to. All right, so now that they're mapped, let's go over back to our, um, our implementation section and let's look at the code that's actually going to get executed when we call our events. Again, very important that you save the interface file because doing a build and run will not save your interface file. And you're like, hey, how come my events aren't getting fired and my outlets aren't getting um, populated with data? Well, that's because you need to file and you need to save um, what's in your interface builder. And now let's go ahead and go to our uh, implementation section. And here I now have my signatures match for my, my actions. Here is IB action seed and IB action generate. Those signatures need to match, meaning how they're declared with the parameters and everything need to be identical. As a matter of fact, some people will just copy, like myself, everything and move it over to make sure they have it exactly right. You, it's optional uh, with Xcode 3.2. They left it so it didn't generate a compiler warning if you had the semicolon at the end, just because a lot of people do that. But I always get rid of the semicolon at the end because it's not... Uh, traditional and hard to teach an old dog new tricks. So anyway, um, so when the when the generate, uh, well, hold on here, I just messed up here. That needs to be, there we go, generate. So the first one I call is seed. Seed is going to call um, two C functions. One's called time, which is going to return the current system time. And then that's going to seed the random number generator so that I get a truly random number. When I click the generate button, it will take what was seeded there and give me a random number between 0 and 100. And then what I can do then with my outlet, my random number outlet here that I've declared, I can call set text and um, it will then write the text out to that view. And I'm good to go. All right. Um, so that, when I run the application now, if I set my breakpoints, boom, boom, and do a build and run, we can see how everything works. Okay, so I'll hit seed. All right, I hit my breakpoint. I'll go ahead and let it run. And it puts generator seated here, which is where I got this. That automatically gets set up because the outlet's connected. And then when I click on generate random number, my generate uh, method gets called and the random number gets produced. All right, for, um, for those, that are you, those of you that are listening to the recording, um, this will go ahead and conclude our 10 minute session here with YouTube. And for those of you that are listening live, I'm going to stop the recording and answer any questions that you might have. Again, these are recorded every Wednesday night. You're welcome to join me at excelme.com. And if you go there and um, go to the forum, 
my online forum, you can go ahead and register for these GoToWebinars so you can attend live as well. Thanks, everybody, and look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Those of you here that are in the U.S., have a great Thanksgiving.